is the day the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We're delighted to be here for your divine appointment, which is the media ministry of the Divine Jackson Media Ministries. I'm Dr. Jackson and we're here for Thursday school, which is Sunday school three days early. So we bless God that you joined us. We want you to know that these recordings are available on our various social media platforms, 24 hours a day on demand. And we ask you to, if you would so kindly tell others about Thursday School. Some have asked, how can we support the ministry? Some cannot give financially, what have you. One of the greatest things you can do, darlings, if you would help us, is to get this teaching in front of more people. If you tell people about it, maybe there's someone, whenever you work out, you can listen to uh, this teaching. Maybe someone's in the hospital, they can just lay their device, listen to Thursday School after Thursday School after Thursday School. Maybe someone who's incarcerated behind bars. Maybe someone while, you, in addition to your exercise, maybe as you commute, you're up and down the road. Listen to Thursday school after Thursday school after Thursday. You can go back years. And as you listen, getting this a word before more people, that's a tremendous support. Will you help me do it? We'd appreciate that. And on Facebook, if you would like and share this video, and then on YouTube, if you would kindly subscribe, don't forget every day we have postings on the community tab right at the top of the youtube channel community tab there's a posting every day in addition there's a posting every day on facebook and on linkedin and uh, about once a week or so on twitter as well and all of those postings are in addition to the sunday school lesson other topics but all of it is about the savior will you help us get the word out i would appreciate that so much god bless you today lord we love you Thank you for this lesson, second Sunday of May. What a blessing to be here to study your word with my brothers, sisters, and friends around the world. Now, God, transform us by the word. This we pray in Jesus' name and amen. Well, God bless you, darlings. May the 14th, 2023, and the lesson is jumping for joy. <laughs> is there anybody out there jumping for joy? At least let's clap our hands and wave at the wonderful king. Glory to God. Our lesson is found in the book of Acts, chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. And uh, I'll be reading in the King James Version. Glory to God. And a little bit later on, we'll have our Bible spotlight. So starting with uh, verse 1, it says, Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer. Glory to God. And it says, At the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, right, he's lame. So he's carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. Glory to God. And he, why is he there? He's there to ask alms from those who entered the temple, uh, who, who, uh, ask alms of those who entered the temple. So let's pause there. Now, the temple there in uh, Jerusalem, and he called it Herod's temple, uh, we know that the first temple was built by Solomon uh, in Old Testament times, but that one was destroyed by the king of Babylon when he overthrew Jerusalem, when he overthrew the southern kingdom, and that was about 586 before the coming of Christ. So the temple of Solomon was destroyed. And then after 70 years of captivity of Judah, they were in uh, under uh, Babylonian rule, and then they were under Medo-Persian rule. The Lord opened the door and they came back home. Of course, the temple now is built, this one was built by Zerubbabel. And that temple was built by Zerubbabel. And the wall, of course, built by uh, Nehemiah and Ezra the scribe, restoring worship. Amen. So we've got the temple builder, the wall builder, the restorer of worship. But order of business number one was restoration of worship with uh, the scribe Ezra. Well, uh, over time, destructions and things occur again. There's revolts and things that happen in the history of the Jews, and some things occur just before. Um, uh, the, 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 there's revolts and things that occur in that period they call the intertestamental period, the 400 years between the two testaments, between old and new. And so there's a lot of Jewish history and things that go on. So now here we are. This temple is not the one of, of uh, Zerubbabel, but it is... Um, uh, built by Herod. This is called Herod's temple. Now, uh, the opinion of whether there is just a restoration of the ruins from the one that Zerubbabel had, or shall we say from the ground up built, there may be a difference of uh, uh, historical perspective on that. 
But this temple that they have during the time of the Lord Jesus, it was built by Herod, partly in, um, shall we say, building relations, uh, better relationships with the Jews. So this is not Solomon's temple and it is not Zerubbabel's temple. This is called Herod's temple. Well, this temple now that is built uh, is the place of worship where people gather. And this is the temple that was there during the time of the ministry of the Lord Jesus, because here we're just now in the book of Acts. The Lord Jesus is resurrected. The apostles are stretching out, amen. They've been filled with the spirit. They've obeyed the Lord Jesus in chapter one. He said, wait in Jerusalem before he ascended. And then they received the Holy Spirit in chapter two. And now here we are, chapter three, they're about the father's business. <laughs> and here they are uh, coming to this uh, temple and uh, there's a man who's born lame. Oh, glory to God. And he symbolizes all of us. We'll talk about that in a minute. But there's a lame man and he's brought every day to the temple. Well, at least someone had wisdom to bring him here to a place where there are persons of, of worshipers that are coming. And he's there to receive alms. Alms is charity. Some might say a handout. This is a, a, a place where people can get help because he's lame from birth. So he's very limited in his ability for self-care and for employment, things of that nature. So they bring him here every day and he's a man. So this has been going on for years. This is a word of comfort to somebody that maybe say, I'm going through a situation in my life, which is like being paralyzed. It's like being lame. And it's been for years, maybe all my life. Oh, but don't lose hope. Glory to God because something beautiful is about to happen at this beautiful gate <laughs> at the house of God. Keep on going to the house of God. Don't give up. Oh, glory to God. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Keep going to the house of God. So they bring him here daily. Something very significant happens, and we see it starting with uh, uh, verse 3. It says here that this man seeing Peter and John. So let me read this to you, uh, King James, who, this is verse three, seeing, key word, Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. Look at verse four, and fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter says, look on us. Verse five, so he gave them his attention expecting to receive something from them. Something very powerful goes on here. There are three times that we see vision, the eyes. Verse three, the man sees Peter and John. And most times we read over that and keep going, but that's significant. This is a bustling, busy place. We're at the temple. People are comings and goings, there are priests and there's other uh, officers and Levites and scribes and the, the worshipers coming and various one, people coming. And it's the hour of prayer, amen. And we know the Jewish uh, uh, day uh, usually mark at 6 a.m. So the ninth hour would be about three in the afternoon. This is a bustling place, this is important. Though. In our condition of being born, like we're born in sin, this man represents all of us. And he here in the midst of the hustle and bustle, shall we say, two men of God, Peter and John, and the Lord blesses him with all that's going on to see these two. Oh, glory to God. Darling, so often we see what we're looking for. If we have lost all hope, we see no hope in anything. But if we allow the spirit to fan the flames of faith and hope in us, our hope will cause us to see the thing that is the source of our help. Oh, glory to God. So even though many were coming and going, he saw Peter and John. Oh, glory to God. And not only this man representing the world in his lost condition saw the church represented by Peter and John, but the church saw him. Glory to God. So after the man sees them uh, going in, he asked for alms, amen. And verse four, and fixing his eyes on him with John, now Peter and John are looking at the man. Glory to God, hallelujah. And they go the next step to say, look this way. This represents the world in trouble. 
the church having the answer, which is the Lord. And the church responding to the need, the church not getting so caught up in its own agenda, I'm heading inside that we forget to take note of the need. Glory to God. And of course, this reminds us of a story of the Good Samaritan that the Lord Jesus gave there in the book of Luke, where there was a priest and a Levite going about their business. And there were certain principles they had in terms of touching dead bodies and so on. But there was a man that was in trouble and the priest and the Levite, neither one met the need. But here came a Samaritan, the one that people would say a commoner. And he's, he's Samaritan, oh, he's a half-breed. Sometimes the ones we count out can be more compassionate than we at the church. So we of the church must keep a heart of compassion. Jesus had a great heart of compassion. God had a great heart, heart of compassion. John 3, 16, God so loved the world, gave his only son. Love and compassion, those should guide the church. And here, the man in trouble, despite the hustle and bustle, hasn't lost hope, but he sees the church. The church responds seeing him. Not saying, you know, we're, we're on the way to pray. No, no, no. They respond to see the man. And then they take the next step, the church, and say, look this way. And the focus wasn't look on us as, oh, as though we are the great ones. And we even see later in the story, they say, no, 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 we didn't heal this man. Jesus did. But the church's job is to continuously tell the world there's an answer. And we have it. And that answer, his name is Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And uh, verse five, the man uh, heeds, he responds. He, he, he uh, responds to what they say, uh, expecting to receive something from them. And that expectation represents faith in the message that the church said to him. The church said, look on us. That is a microcosm of the gospel because we have the answer, which is Jesus. And then the world responded. And then look what happened. The church tells the world. Here's how you receive. Verse six, then Peter said, what did Peter say to him? Peter said, silver and gold I do not have because that's what the man was looking for. Material, well, he's asking for alms, asking for help because of his condition. Peter said, silver and gold I don't have, but what I do have, which is greater. Oh, glory to God. I'm going to give it to you. What I do have, I do, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we dealt with that in the previous lesson, specifying Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The church recognized the real need. Because yes, the man was in need of silver and gold only because he was lame. But when the man, man is no longer lame, it's not a gift of silver and gold that he needs. So the real need was for him to be healed from his condition of being lame. The church must never miss the root cause, even though the world presents us with all kinds of needs. The ultimate need is for deliverance of that state of being spiritually paralyzed and lame, because out of that deliverance comes multitudes of other deliverances. Amen. It's not that we don't do mission work. We are to do mission work. Feed the hungry, clothe the naked. Then Matthew chapter 25 told us, do mission work. We should do it. But the church's ultimate job, always see the root cause of the need. Peter says, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Look at verse 7. And he took him by the hand. Not only did he give him an instruction, but he was there to help him. Oh, glory to God. And he took him by the hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Glory to God. Verse 8. So he leaping up stood, oh glory to God, and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. Oh glory, oh glory. Somebody help me shout, oh glory. <laughs> the man is celebrating the miraculous hand of God. Ah, but there's more to the story. Look at verse 9. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Notice this is like unto different times. Jesus, when he healed the blind man, that in St. John chapter 9. People were like, this man's been blind all his life. What happened? It's a sign. It's a wonder. It's a miracle to draw attention to Jesus. 
our opportunity to get the gospel out. So the people knew this is a grown man all these years. He's always at the gate. We've seen him a multitude of times. Look at him this time. He's walking and leaping and praising God. What went on here? Glory to God. Look at verse 9. All the people saw him walking and praising God. Look at verse 10. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the gate called Beautiful. Praise God. I was back over in King James. Let me come. Let me stay with King James since I'm there. Glory to God. Verse 10. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Oh, glory to God. The man's leaping and celebrating was testifying in action. Look what God has done. Look at verse 11. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly wondering, which opened opportunity to preach the gospel. Glory to God. That's our job, darling. Everywhere and at all times, get the gospel message out. Glory to God. Well, let's pause now here at the end of our lesson for our Bible Spotlight. <laughs> Well, glory to God, I was so excited and moving in the lesson last week. We didn't get to our Bible Spotlight, but we're picking it up again on today. And today we have, as you know, been covering in our Bible Spotlight about the 12 apostles. Many principles have been laid out over this last uh, month or so uh, about the apostles. And we are, then we, after we did general principles, we began to deal with the Sons of Thunder and deal with uh, James and John, and in particular, uh, then dealing with James. And today we're finishing our study on James, and we'll be picking up his brother John on next week. Amen. So please feel free to go back and review any of those spotlights. We are here finishing uh, that James here is one of the sons of thunder, son of Zebedee, amen, had been leader of the Jerusalem church, and uh, his life came to an end. It's recorded there in the book of Acts chapter 12, where uh, Herod takes the sword and he slays uh, James. He beheads him, cuts his head. And I have a historical synopsis that describes how he was martyred. We even talked on the previous uh, 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 Bible Spotlight in particular about martyrdom and what that represents. And that's very important uh, if you have not had a chance to uh, go back and listen to that. But here is the synopsis. It says, James, the son of Zebedee, was a fisherman by trade when Jesus called him to a lifetime of ministry. That's a whole discussion of itself. Notice that when James left uh, the, 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 the profession as fisherman to follow the Lord Jesus and to be made into now a fisher of men, he never went back on the Lord. Now we know all the disciples fled there in the Garden of Gethsemane, but he uh, never uh, forsook the work. We know that after uh, the Lord Jesus uh, was raised from the dead and Peter denied him, Jesus, uh, Peter said, I'm going fishing, and many of the apostles went with him. But even at that time, they went back to the thing that was familiar to them. But there's never an indication that, uh, that there was a renouncing of the faith. I'm leaving Jesus. None of that. We can go through tough times, darlings. But let's just hold the line. Amen. Sometimes you have to grip with all your might just to stay attached. But grip with all your might. And there's never an indication of James wavering in his faith for the Lord. It says, as a strong leader of the church, James ended up being the first of the apostles to be martyred. It's the reason Herod went after James is because he was a leader. Hallelujah, because if you want to overthrow a movement, overthrow its leadership, James stood strong. So Herod went after him. And so he was beheaded at Jerusalem. But notice the story of how that occurred. It says the Roman officer who guarded James, watched in amazement as James defended his faith at his trial. So he's testifying even in his trial where they're getting ready to take his life. And it says later, that officer walked beside James as James is heading to the place where they're gonna cut his head off. And that officer was so moved by the powerful testimony at his trial till he said he's gonna walk with James to that place where they're planning to cut James's head off. Look what happens. 
This officer was so overcome by the conviction of the spirit and James's testimony until that officer declared his faith in Christ also. And the judge now sees this officer, you're gonna align with the faith of this prisoner? Oh yes, I am. <laughs> so what they did was, they said, they're gonna cut your head off too, Mr. Officer. You're gonna align with the faith of this prisoner, James? Yes, I am. We're gonna cut your head off too. So the historical record is that the officer, oh glory to God, knelt down right beside James and they beheaded him. Oh glory to God. You never know, darlings, how your battles, your struggles, your testimonies, your trials are gonna fall out to the advancing of the gospel. Father, use us to bring honor to your son. You know what you prepared us for. You know what you purposed us for. You know what you called us to. Help us to stand, endure unto the end, just like you told us to. Bless my brothers, sisters, and friends. Bless us all to be faithful and endure and to be true to the end, whatever that might look like. For this, we give you praise in Jesus' name. And amen. God bless you, my brothers, sisters, and friends. Remember this, the God of the Bible, he's real. Oh, glory to God. Prepare for your divine appointment with him. And if you haven't made Christ your Savior, do it now. God bless you till we meet again.